This program has been brought to you by Cell One. Welcome to 2015's 10 Most Fascinating People of Bermuda. I'm Lisa Pickering. Everyone has a story, a little something that makes them unique, especially right here in Bermuda. But what does it mean to be fascinating? We've put together a list of 10 Bermudians that captured the headlines in 2015. Whether they've been the subject of controversy or of great praise, there isn't an individual on this list that hasn't come up in conversation around the dinner table, at the office, or at social gatherings. Each individual featured on this list share one thing in common. They all have shown passion, determination, and perseverance in the face of setbacks. The list is in no particular order, but the final subject revealed is this year's most fascinating person of Bermuda. Let's get started. This fisherman's son from Whitehill has certainly made a name for himself. Controversy and headlines have followed the Progressive Labour Party leader, Mark Bean, throughout much of 2015. But the opposition leader doesn't mind if his leadership style ruffles a few feathers. The 41-year-old attributes his advancement within the party to, quote, merit, ability, clean hands and pure heart, and has recently been pushing for a good governance act to pass in Parliament. His communication style in and out of the House of Assembly has landed him in hot water, including a court case that was later dismissed and other threats of legal action from former Premier York Brown, who once mentored the young leader. Mr. Breen has also been squashing rumours that his own leadership position is in jeopardy. Um, my, my leadership is solid. Um, the party has made it clear that they support the approach I am taking. I'm not going to speak of the internal um, apparatus and how it operates, but rest assured that I would expect to continue as the leader of my party and one day the premier of our country. And I will meet the expectations of not only my members, but also those who do not support the Progressive Labour Party and will never vote for the Progressive Labour Party. That's my responsibility. And so I have to be that agent of change. I, I'm, I'm being backed by at least 75% of the membership. And uh, I will continue to, to exercise um, my responsibilities and fulfill my obligations. Simple. Now, much like the Premier, mm -hmm. you evoke an emotion in the people of Bermuda, mm -hmm. positive or negative. Yes. Why do you think that is? Um, it all depends. Uh, you ask me the negative, I could probably um, speculate. And if you ask me the positive, I can speculate. Um, I cannot speak for the Premier, but when you are a politician or a political leader, the environment in this country basically ensures that half the people are going to hate you and half will like you. That's just what it is. And it's nothing to do with one's personality. It's just the sides of the fence that you sit on. Um, you might see some people even within my party, like, like I'm sure the Premier has, uh, resistance to my approach and style to leadership. But I have to make it clear that I serve uh, at the will and pleasure of the people. And uh, I have received a mandate from my party delegates and members that says, leader, clean up our party. Clean up the way we think, clean up the way we act, because obviously the current government is not meeting the expectations of the country, and we cannot be repetitious and mimic what's come before. And so if, regardless if people like me or, or don't like me, They'll never be able to say that Mark Bean is not trustworthy, Mark Bean is not frank, Mark Bean is not honest, Mark Bean does not have clean hands. Mark Bean does not advocate policies that either increase the dependency or increase the divide amongst uh, the population. You'll never hear me say it. I never have, never will. And when you come in and take an approach like that, naturally it's going to create some anxiety. Now you had mentioned a goal was to become the leader of the country. What would well, you that's not really a goal, but I'm the opposition leader and the next election, I could quite possibly become the premier of the country. Yeah. And what would you say to those that might say that that idea scares them? Yeah, well, if you look at the other 35 members in parliament, the idea was if you put or replace those persons with me, it would scare a lot of people too, because we are all humans. But a lot of this, fear, which is manufactured, is to destroy the confidence 
any people towards me, but I have a relationship with people that cannot be broken because of propaganda. What you see is what you get. And my approach might create anxiety in the country, but again, as long as I know that I'm doing what's right instead of what I like, eventually, if people don't appreciate me now, history will, and that's what comes. Um, you've been called harsh, <laughs> misogynist, yeah, homophobic, yeah. xenophobic. Yeah. Is that a fair assessment of Mark Bean? Far from it. Far from it. But um, for me, when I use the English language, I use the English language to describe behavior. It just so happens again that in this environment, um, it's to be, when someone describes behavior, they are actually sinning or committing a crime, but uh, people ignore the actual behavior. I have actually used language that's very um, graphic in Parliament and outside of Parliament so the people can understand the gravity of the situation. Um, one time I used language ladies of the night, which naturally was taken and blown out of proportion, but I received permission from the Speaker of the House to use that language because I wanted to convey what I felt is the attitude of the Minister, Michael Fay and the government in terms of immigration policy and how they treat Bermudians. As a leader, shouldn't I point out danger? Shouldn't I point out issues that our people have to be aware? And to wake you up out of your slumber, I might need to use language to get your attention. But it was never, ever an attack on the women of the OBA. Well, that's a good segue into my next question. Um, you do surround yourself with very strong women in your life. You've often sure. referenced your wife yeah. um, in terms of legal battles that you've mm -hmm. gone to her for advice. Mm -hmm. uh, you referenced your mother earlier, your sister. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think that runs counter to some of the things that you have said about women? What have I said about women? What about the Tony Daniels situation? Well, first of all, I got, there was no case to answer. Second of all, I am a leader, okay? I am a real man. When I see a sister, right, in my opinion, being used and abused in the political process, okay, and then attacking my people, all right, publicly, then it's a problem because now I have to hurl back my people to respond. When I see you face to face, instead of saying it through the media, I let you know that there is a lot of information about your behavior, your activities within the One Bermuda Alliance that I have not allowed anyone to use against you publicly, but yet you want to attack my candidate. Am I to set aside my manhood, my integrity as a man, the love that I have for women, to, to allow them to sit back and to be used and abused? for the political process, or shall I open my mouth and constructively try to help the sister? When you come in the room with the PLP, there's no gender bias in the PLP. We have had multiple female leaders. They are my mentors. When you come into the Progressive Labour Party under my leadership, you are advanced based on merit and merit alone. Do you understand me? Merit and merit alone. Well, let's move on to the House, um, where you had fire exchanges with uh, the Speaker of the House, Randy Horton, yeah. uh, throughout this year. Yeah. How is your relationship currently with him? It's the same. Yeah, it's the same. It's cordial, you know, but at the same time, we understand <laughs> what the deal is. And, uh, and so we just have to uh, wait till it plays out. That's all. You seem to um, stand strongly behind what you say, even in reflection. Has there ever been a moment where you regret saying something? In, in politics? No. In life? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I am a man with many weaknesses. Okay? Many weaknesses as a man. I am far from perfect. I do not set, my, set myself up to be some paragon of virtue. Right? And so I, I am human. But in terms of uh, politics and leadership, I say what I mean, I mean what I say, and then I seek to do it. And that way, um, I can live up to this title that I have before my name, which is called Honorable. You can't be honorable if you're not honest, all right? So I seek to live it. I, I don't seek to, to say it and, or just talk it. And, and no, I have no regret for anything that I've said uh, since I've been in politics because, um, quite frankly, everything I've said has been based on facts and the truth or the search for truth. Now, if I had made errors, I would apologize for it. I apologize, but what I regret Making an error? No, because that's part of life experience and learning. Um, as long as I'm in politics, as long as I'm alive, I will continue to learn and to improve. But no, I don't have no regrets, anything. Mm -mm. 
Do you feel that your message is sometimes buried with all of, of the course. other things the that greatest, people tend to The greatest focus on? fear, the greatest fear, that the powers that be, regardless of where they sit, the greatest fear is that they do not want the public to hear me speak to them as we are now. That's their greatest fear, because that removes the veil that they have created, the manufactured veil that Mark Mean is everything but a son of God. Okay, because when I do speak personally, just like we are doing now, you, you're able to tap into a bit of my soul because I will open up to you to express myself. I'm not going to hide anything. You have a thick skin, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Is there something, though, that you'd want the general public to know about you yeah. that, that they aren't aware of? Yeah, I, I am a man that, at my best, I'm extremely self-disciplined. I'm extremely quiet. Um, generally speaking, I am soft. Right? Um, I'm not hard, um, unless I have to be hard. Um, yeah, and I'm easy to approach. I'm not a socialite, so don't expect to see me cocktailing in receptions, having little light conversations. That's not what I do. I spend most of my time in study, contemplation, and meditation. The correlation between meditation and when you're in the house and there are those moments that you're in the heat of things. Yes. Um, your message we talked about previously sometimes yes. gets lost because of that, some yes. of the things you say. Yes. Is that a goal for 2016? Yeah, absolutely, but I also hope that people start to listen more. Don't be swayed with, with the propaganda of the media. But if I can be more preventative, yes. There was an opportunity just Friday going where the Speaker of the House blatantly broke the rules again. And many people might have thought that I would have reacted um, as they have seen in the past. I just smiled and sat down because the racket history will record it. I'm not, I'm not getting into those battles anymore. Have you always had your family support when it comes to politics and do you continue to have their support? Absolutely. Um, that's really the only support I do have uh, when, when the rubber hits the road. Um, our mother uh, died in 1990. Yeah, 1990. And so I was 16. Uh, we have one sister who is the second oldest. She maintains that motherly, matriarchal uh, figure, the glue within, within uh, my family. Um, but I have three brothers, Alan, uh, Alan Jr., sorry, Cornell, who's the golf professional, and Dalvin, who you already know. And all my siblings, and my father, and my wife, and my children, and uncles and aunts, they're very supportive of me, very, very supportive of me. And it's always been that way and will always be that way. And that wraps up the list for the most fascinating people of Bermuda 2015. Please feel free to send your suggestions for 2016 to burmebios at gmail.com. I'm Lisa Pickering, and thanks for watching. This program has been brought to you by Cell One. With Cell One, you simply get more. More 4G speed and reliability across the island. More warranty coverage from the only carrier authorized to resell Apple iPhones in Bermuda. More first-class service with our 24-7 customer care, whether you're in-store, on the phone, or online. More services, mobile phones, long distance, and home internet, all with one company. Get more with one. Sell one.